Both of these methods for estimating distance depend upon an accurate judgment of the brightness of the star. However, it is often difficult to tell whether something is close but small, or large and a long distance away. Everything, including stars, look brighter when we are close to them. Therefore, to properly compare the size and brightness of several stars, we should be the same distance away from all of them. But of course we can't do this, we can't move in space. Therefore, to make this comparison, we imagine we are the same distance from each star. And in this case, we imagine we are 10 parsecs away from each star. The brightness of a star, as it actually looks to us, is called the apparent magnitude. The brightness that it would be at this special distance of 10 parsecs is called the absolute magnitude. For this idea to be of any use, we have to have a method of deciding what is the absolute magnitude of a star. About a hundred years ago, Hertzsprung and Russell created this chart, complicated at first glance and even at second glance. They realised that the huge gravitational attraction in a large star caused the fusion reaction, the combination of hydrogen atoms to create helium, they caused that reaction to run very quickly. Because it runs very quickly, the star is much hotter and the light it emits is much closer to the blue end of the spectrum. The opposite is true in a small star where the light emitted is closer to the red end of the spectrum. So the main feature and use of the diagram is that it relates the colour of the star to its temperature and size and therefore absolute magnitude. Using this relationship of colour to absolute magnitude they drew out their graph. The main part which is of interest to us is that of the main sequence stars. Main sequence stars are stars which are of the same order of size of our Sun and includes our Sun, which are progressing through the main phase of their life cycle. That is, before the star becomes a red giant. The diagram can be used now to estimate distance. I say estimate, it's not a very accurate measurement. The scale of the magnitude is rather strange, with the brighter stars having a negative magnitude. The scale is logarithmic, with five points in absolute magnitude corresponding to a hundred times brighter. Returning to measurements on Sirius, having already been marked with the diagram from its spectral colour, that having been measured by a spectroscope, we can draw a graph line across from Sirius to the absolute magnitude scale and estimate that value. That's a bit difficult to see on here, but I estimate it at around 1.5. By comparing this absolute magnitude with what we actually see, the apparent magnitude, we can make a calculation of the distance of Sirius from Earth. The brightness of a star depends upon distance according to the inverse square law. The apparent brightness is proportional to 1 over d squared. Without going through all the intervening algebra then, the distance to a star is 10 parsecs multiplied by 10 to the power m minus large m divided by 5, where little m is the apparent magnitude and big M is the absolute magnitude. Sirius is the brightest star in the sky and is observed to have a magnitude, an apparent magnitude, of minus 1.46. Substituting for those values of magnitude, and then, doing the follow-up arithmetic, we have 10 times 10 to the minus 0 0.6. That comes at 2.51 parsecs. Now, parsec is 3.26 light-years, so 2.51 parsecs is 8.2 light-years. Not exactly equal to the accepted value, but I have rounded some of the numbers I've used. Cephid variables were first noted about 200 years ago. They're a type of star where the brightness changes over a fairly short period, perhaps only of a few days, as can be seen in these six frames from NASA, and in the centre, the variation of the brightness of the star. Cephid variable stars are very bright, and seem to be a result of an especially massive hot star using up its fuel early, and leaving it in this pulsating state. The regular change in magnitude is large, and seems to be a change in the size and density of the star. When it's large, it's bright, and when it's small and dense, it is dimmer. Just over 100 years ago, in 1908, the astronomer Henrietta Swan-Leavitt 
discovered that there was a mathematical relationship between the pulse rate of a Cepheid variable and its absolute magnitude. Other astronomers, including particularly Edwin Hubble, used this graph to estimate the distance of Cepheid variables in distant galaxies. After measuring the time period of a particular Cepheid variable, that is traced up to the graph line, then from the graph line across to the y-axis to find the absolute magnitude of the star. The absolute magnitude is then compared with the apparent or observed magnitude and the distance calculated using the equation we saw before. Thank you for watching.